Ever feel like your brain just won't shut off? Your thoughts are racing, you're replaying things over and over in your mind, and you just can't seem to relax or fall asleep? I'm Erin from TechGadgetsCanada.com, and what if you could know what's going on inside your cranium? That is the premise of the Muse Brain Sensing Headbands. Muse S is a headband style device that claims to track your brain activity and using built-in meditations to help you relax or even fall asleep. I recently got a sample of the Muse S to try out and see for myself what it can do. In this review, I'll walk you through how it works, what the experience is like, and whether I can recommend it to you. An early heads up, if you end up liking this video and finding it helpful, to please mash that like button and hit me with a sub. Both those things help me keep making more videos that I hope everyone out there gets to watch, enjoy, and learn from. Muse S consists of a soft headband and removable brain sensing pod that's rechargeable. There are many devices out there that say they can track sleep cycles to varying degrees of accuracy, but the Muse S takes things a step further. It's a device that actually uses EEG readings and provides you feedback that can supposedly help you train your brain. It's a combination sleep monitor, sleep helper, and meditation assistant. So what does Muse monitor? While you meditate or sleep, Muse S will monitor your heart rate, brainwave activity or EEG, and your breathing. For setup, you'll need to download the Muse app and create an account. Next, charge up your Muse sensor and clip it into the headband. The app will take you through an initial demonstration and share some tips if you're not familiar with how to use it. The thing I found out is that if the sensor isn't clipped into the dock on the band correctly, your Muse S will not work properly. Make sure there's absolutely no gap between the dock and the sensor and press to close any that you do see. Even a very small gap can mean your sensors won't take readings. With the brain sensor pod charged, put the headband on and open the app. Tap to connect to your band via Bluetooth. You'll choose a session and then the device will check the sensor contact with your skin. Then you should just be able to sit back and listen to the audio. Also important is you need to make sure the Muse logo is facing up. If you wear the band upside down, the sensors, particularly those on the ears, can't connect for a proper reading. Before each and every session, your band will recalibrate itself, and this takes about a full minute. Each of the sensors across the front and behind the ears need to make perfect contact with your head, or the whole thing will not work. There is no four out of five sensors are working, so let's just go ahead anyway option. I can tell you I found this very difficult, particularly getting these ear sensors properly connected was a big challenge that frankly stressed me out the more times I used it. You've got to make sure no hair gets in the way of these sensors, which for some of us is a bit of a challenge. Colored light bars in the app will light up when you've got all your connections made properly. Help you reduce stress, alleviate anxiety, and increase focus and concentration. The audio plays over your phone's you speaker, and if you're wondering, the band does not also double as earphones, so you'll want a quiet place to do your session where you won't disturb changes, others. You can connect earbuds as long as they don't interfere with the band. I tried out several of the guided meditations. They feature some type of spa-like music, tones, nature sounds, and some have voice guidance depending on the options you pick. Now you can't see it during the session because they don't want you having any distractions, but afterwards you can get feedback on your brain activity, your heart rate, and or your overall mindfulness, depending on the session you've chosen. The app can also compare current sessions to previous progress. I decided first to set a baseline. I put on a breathing meditation and then I proceeded not to breathe deeply and I read and typed at my computer while the meditation was on. My score, surprisingly, showed me in very high levels of harmony with my breath guide, and I scored seven bird points. That just didn't seem right, so I decided to do the test over again, and this time try to truly focus on my breathing while sitting completely still. The results seemed a little more uniform and had fewer spikes, but even so, it wasn't that different from my previous test. I did score 12 birds on my second try where I took relaxing seriously. Next, I did two mind meditations. You need about a minute or more to calibrate the sensor before it's going to scan your brain. As I did, you may need to fidget with the band to get good contact and the app will show you where you're failing. When all the pieces of the pie are lit up, you can advance to the meditation and brain scan. The first mind meditation I took very seriously and I tried my best to relax and be still. Even so, 
I didn't score very well. The second time, I worked at my desk the whole time, and rather surprisingly, I scored way more calm. WTF. So I did the two tests over again. This time, during the relaxed session, I'll call it, I scored a bit better and it seemed a bit more accurate. When I did the working and typing one, it was the same thing as the first time. That reading showed me as more calm than when I was relaxing. So I don't know. I'm not sure what I should read into this, if anything. Am I naturally more relaxed when I'm working with purpose? Or are these readings just not accurate? The Muse S also has what the company calls digital sleeping pills. Think of that process like a DJ trying to play the right track to help you fall asleep and you're the DJ. It will blend restful sounds in and it can lower the audio level too when you fall asleep and then reactivate it when the brain scanner detects you've woken during the night. The digital sleeping pill options include things like sleep stories where someone talks, there's ambient soundscapes, and sleep meditations. This is a nice idea, but if you have a sleeping partner who doesn't want to listen to, you've got a bit of a problem. I guess that's where earbuds would come in. I tried these to fall asleep too. I chose both a story version and an ambient sound option. I actually really liked them both, but they kept fading out too fast before I was actually asleep. There's supposed to be that setting too that will bring the audio back up again if you wake up in the night. I had it turned on, but the audio didn't resume for me during my testing period. I do think the sleep tracking was accurate. It seemed to get my sleep-wake pattern correct when I laid down for a nap and overnight during a full sleep. In short, I really liked the digital sleeping pills and I would definitely listen to them again. But the problem is you must calibrate and wear your Muse S in order to access these audio files. You can't just listen to the audio files on their own. Although if you can, I sure couldn't figure out how you can do it. The major downside to sleeping with the Muse on was that it was uncomfortable after a while and I woke up and actually took it off. Plus it left a wicked mark on my forehead that took over an hour to go away. Overall, I have mixed feelings about the Muse S. I think that having the opportunity to sit down and relax with guided meditations in the app is a good thing and it can only be beneficial. But do you need something that costs $400 to tell you your heart rate and supposedly sense your brain at the same time and judging whether you're relaxed or not? This device is also not something that's going to automatically calm you down. In my opinion, you need to be a bit predisposed to taking part in meditation for this to truly work. You can't simply strap on the headband and achieve instant zen. It's not a zen vending machine. That would be a zending machine. You need to commit to listening to these meditations and following the instructions. If you think you'd do that, this is a great meditation app and having the brain scan readings might actually be a great way for you to track your progress. Another positive point for the Muse S is that I think the sleep tracking was very accurate. Downsides? I found the band to be a bit finicky when it came to getting calibrated. Sometimes it was a genuine struggle to get proper band to skin contact. I also found that sleeping in the Muse was kind of uncomfortable and it left marks on my face and I couldn't get the wake up feature to work. It's also not possible that I can see to use the Muse app audio without the band on. I also don't think the brain sensing was really accurate, which is kind of the main selling feature of this device. And at $400, the Muse S is certainly an expensive investment that you'll want to ensure you're going to use regularly. I think whether or not you'll like your Muse experience depends very much on your predispositions and openness to meditation and if you'd be willing to wear it to bed nightly to help you fall asleep. If you already meditate and want something to give you a level up, Muse S might be a great pick for you. If you're a stressed out person looking for a magical quick fix, this is not it. In the end, I'm not going to recommend Muse. For me, the cons for this device outweigh the pros here. The Muse S sells for about $3.99 US and you can get it from their website. If you want to read this review or reference any of what I've talked about, you can head over to techgadgetscanada.com where I've got a full write-up. There you can ask me any questions you have about this device. You can also post them here in comments below. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Erin. Until the next time, you can find me on either Twitter or Instagram. I'm at ErinLYYC. You can also always catch me on Facebook at facebook.com slash techgadgetscanada.
Hi, Kika. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to make a video and I'm getting smooched. <laughs>